Hi, so my name is Stephanie Sambrowski, and I'm starting up this new blog as part of my ongoing love and education in the field of music therapy. I'm currently a student at Lesley University, getting a master's in music therapy and mental health counseling. And I created this video blog, I guess, to try to open some doors and provide a forum for discussion, I guess, about music and music therapy and the way that sound heals us. I was hoping that I could provide some of my ideas, but since I'm such a fresh chicken in this field, um, I'm hoping that I can get some ideas back too. And since this is my first blog, I think one of the most important things to talk about first is what exactly music therapy is, because I get this question all the time, and there's just a fundamental lack of understanding, I guess, about what, what exactly music therapy is. And it's because it's a small field, it's a new field. It rose up actually right around the time of World War II with um, veterans coming back and community musicians going into hospitals and playing music for people and doctors and people working with the vets really started to see some of the benefits and this sort of led to more research and experimentation and music therapy was born. So that said, it's only about 50, 60, 70 years old, so we're new and there aren't a whole lot of us. So I guess the most common question that I get, and it's understandable because there just isn't a whole lot of um, knowledge on the subject yet, is you know, are you playing live music with people or are you listening from your iPod? Or are you teaching music? I think teaching music seems to be a common misconception with people when they're asking about music therapy is that it looks like some kind of music lesson. And the answer to those questions is yes, sometimes we are listening to recorded music and sometimes we are teaching some techniques, but that's really not the bulk of music therapy and that's really not the goal in music therapy. Music therapy is like other therapies, think speech therapy, occupational therapy, um, or other kinds of rehabilitation, mental health counseling, for example. Music is sort of the avenue we go through to reach some of these other domains, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like our tool, even though the goals are non-musical, and that's the big distinction. We don't um, have someone walk through the door and hope they're going to walk out playing a Beethoven sonata or anything. That That's really not at all the goal. If that happens, that's cool, but that's really not what we're looking for. Um, instead, we take some of the goals from um, either our own assessments or from, if it depends on the setting, but if you're working, for example, I'm currently working in an internship with adults with developmental delays. So oftentimes I go to look at records for some of these people and look at the goals provided by their speech therapist or their counselor or their occupational therapist. And some of these might be physical goals, some of these might be um, social goals, or speech goals, um, or just a general goal of providing a better quality of life. And so all of those goals can be addressed and accessed through music, and that's what makes music really amazing. And so one of the other misconceptions is people say, oh, well, I'm not a musician, so I can't possibly do anything in music therapy. I don't sing, I don't play the piano, I have no sense of rhythm. And um, it's interesting because our culture has really put such a strain and pressure on creative expression. And to the point where people grow up believing that they're not good at an instrument, so they can't play, and they're not going to play, and they're not going to sing only in the car or only in the shower. And that's really a shame because these avenues of expression are so powerful, no matter what the product is. And um, that's where people sort of get lost, thinking that, oh, if I don't sound like Taylor Swift, I can't, I can't sing or I can't participate. And, I mean, like I said, since the product or um, the musical outcome is not the goal, then it really doesn't matter what you sound like. The important part is the process and um, how you feel 
when you sing or how you feel when you play and some of the emotions that it stirs up. So what you see a lot of times is someone with anxiety or perfectionism might get really wrapped up in, in music therapy because they might have a really hard time dealing with not sounding perfect. And then that's something you can work through um, as a music therapist. And you can see how that translates into other areas of life. And so I guess that's the point, is that music therapy provides kind of a start for how can we work on some of these other skills that happen outside of music. And it's really fascinating and it's really interesting work because everyone has this fundamental musical child is kind of the, the term that we use a lot. And we try to foster that and see what that brings out for people. So, I mean, one more example that I'll say, I, I started to mention it about the people that I work with currently. So say someone has a social goal of um, learning to communicate their needs to someone else. Um, what we could do in music, for example, is they'll come to a music group sometimes. Sometimes there's individual music therapy sessions too. But they'll come to a music group and maybe we'll talk about drumming sadness and what sadness feels like. And so we provide everyone with a drum and they they can think and consider what it feels like in their body and provide a sound to that. And for someone who's nonverbal, that's a really empowering experience because it gives sound to something they can't otherwise express. So um, drum circles, I know sometimes too, have a connotation that's not really in line with music therapy. Um, so I, I should say that we use a lot of other instruments and melodic instruments, even with people who don't have any musical foundation, but anyone can access these instruments. I think people get really wrapped up in this idea that they, they can't do music and they kind of build this wall. Um, so that's, that's a little taste of what music therapy is about. And I'm hoping that as this goes on, I'll, I'll have more musings on this, but, um, I think the important part, and I'll, I'll quote Ken Brucia, who's big in music therapy. He talks a lot about music as therapy or music in therapy. And this is this interesting debate in the field as whether we are just having a therapeutic experience as it is, and music is just in it or a tool, or music itself is the therapy and that there's something inherent and sort of spiritual in music that can heal. So there's, there's this disconnect and, not disconnect, there's, there's this conversation about kind of where we are. And that's very different too as just playing music for people or having a music lesson, which I'm not, I'm not downplaying that, but it's just not what music therapy is. So the goals of music therapy are always non-musical. That's the other really important part, is non-musical goals that we are somehow accessing through music. And there are lots of really cool creative ways to do that. So hopefully I'll get more opportunities and more things on here to show you what that's about. So that's it.